So now looking at some of the ligaments around the shoulder, here we've got a plastic and rubber shoulder model. So looking uh, firstly at the acromioclavicular ligament. So here we have a right shoulder model. If we take a superior point of view, here we have the clavicle and here's the acromion. So these fibres here on the superior aspect of the acromioclavicular joint are the acromioclavicular ligament. Now it's been decided by people who know best that the fibres here, the inferior capsule of the acromioclavicular joint, are not thick enough to be called a ligament. So if the top of the joint is pinned, that's the acromioclavicular ligament there. Now the glenohumeral joint capsule, part of which is, is missing from this model, has been removed so we can see other structures, is this structure here. And you can see it on the anterior aspect and it comes down, covers the inferior aspect of the joint and it can also be seen on the posterior aspect of the, of the joint on this model. But it would in life, in, a, in real life of course, cover this whole region here. But the superior part of the capsule is missing from this model so that we can see these other structures here. Okay, so that's not how it would be. So we can only see part of it here. Now on the interior aspect of the capsule, just here on the, on the anterior surface, that's where the glenohumeral ligaments are, but they're not visible on this model. They're, they're on the inside of the joint capsule, so we, we can't actually see the glenohumeral ligaments here, but they would be just under the surface of the capsule just here. Then we have the glenoid labrum. Now on this model, there is a little lip here in this rubber tissue here, just uh, adjacent to the head of the humerus there. And if you're up close with it, you know, you're actually holding one yourself, you can just see what, they, what I, I think they mean to be the glenoid labrum in there. But much easier to see and much easier for me to, to pin it on a specimen. Then we have the coracohumeral ligament. Now that's one of these structures up here on top where the capsule has been uh, cut away to show. So here's the coracohumeral ligament. And if you look carefully, you can just see in the little space here that it comes in and attaches to the base of the coracoid process. Because it, when you look at it just out here, it doesn't really look like it's attaching to the coracoid process. It does, but right on the base just here, just kind of in or very close to the supraspinous fossa. So that's the... Uh, coracohumeral ligament. The coracochromial ligament is probably kind of easier to spot and easier to identify because it just goes from the coracoid process to the acromion. So there's the coracochromial ligament. And then the transverse humeral ligament. Now I can't show you that on this model but I can show you where it is. This other structure here is the tendon of the long head of biceps brachii running it through the intertubercular sulcus here between the lesser and greater tubercles. So here's the tendon. Now, uh, in, in life and on specimens, you will find that there are fibres that run across the tendon from the lesser to the greater tubercle. And those fibres are the transverse humeral ligaments. That can be seen on specimens, but not on this model. And then I've already mentioned the glenohumeral ligaments, which would be under here. And then, of course, lastly, we have the coracoclavicular ligament. Now, if both of these structures were pinned, that would be the coracoclavicular ligament. But if the more lateral one on its own is pinned, that, of course, is the trapezoid ligament coming from the trapezoid line down to the coracoid process. And the more medial of the two is the conoid ligament going from the coracoid process up to the conoid tubercle on the clavicle.